Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Simon Volta, the regional account director here at V Technologies, and I do appreciate uh, everyone taking some time this afternoon um, to learn a little bit more about our Starship Cloud application. Uh, we do appreciate your business that you've been loyal customers, you know, to us. So for all these years that you've been using our Shipgear product, um, and I, as you all know now, that Shipgear has an end of life uh, for set for twelve thirty one twenty three. Um, so today we're going to hope to show you some additional features that Starship can offer all of you uh, that you may not be aware of. And um, like Megan said, if you do have questions, please put them in the pane and we'll leave as much time as possible here um, at the end of the webinar to address those questions. So just going to give you an overview of V Technologies. Obviously, you all know us. You know kind of what we do as far as the ship gear perspective. Um, but Starship itself was really founded in 1989. Uh, it's really our flagship product. It's been around now for 30 plus years um, and really a multi-carrier, multi-mode uh, application. Uh, and, and so in that case, um, we really integrate with many different ERP platforms and accounting software such as QuickBooks. Um, but again, that's where Starship really came to be was in 1989. Um, we have over 20 years experience in the Intuit space uh, with both of our products, uh, Quick, um, Starship and Shipgear. Uh, and we're also a, a solution provider as well on the QuickBooks side, um, where we do have the ability of selling um, additional licensing in the QuickBooks space as well. So I just want to take a moment to really speak to some key features of Starship. For those of you who don't know Starship or never heard of Starship in the past, um, again, as I mentioned, it's a multi-carrier, multi-mode application. It's really a shipping solution in itself. Um, so it integrates with not only your FedExes, your UPS, post office um, of the world. Um, we do integrate with many different LTL applications as well. Um, we have about two dozen roughly carrier applications as well as a few 3PLs that we do support, uh, which I do have a slide here momentarily to show you all. Um, we can look at reducing your freight spend. Um, and what I mean by that is Starship offers a rate shopping tool um, built into it. Um, and we'll go out and basically pull back the negotiated rates with your carriers you have set up uh, and show you those um, the least expensive cost for you. Um, including the discounted rates that we offer to you for the post office. Um, so again, if you are a shipper who's shipping lightweight product, um, you know, again, fits the mold for the post office, you could potentially save some money by taking advantage of those discounts. They are the lowest rates that um, the post office will allow us to offer to you. So again, if you have a need for that, we can definitely talk more about those uh, as we speak to you later on. We also can integrate to various e-commerce uh, platforms. Um, so your Shopify's, your Amazon's, Ebay's, et cetera, all of those platforms, we do have integrations built with those. Um, and again, we can either tie in directly to those or we can also use it what we call e-commerce as an extension. Um, all that simply means is when we update QuickBooks for you, uh, we will also bring in the tracking information back to your e-commerce cart. Um, so that way you don't have to do that manually any longer. Um, so again, if you are using any of those platforms today, and again, I have a slide on the various ones that we do touch or can integrate to, um, please let us know. We're happy to explain that uh, workflow uh, to you a little bit better. And then lastly, here's just simplifying the shipping paperwork. Um, so when I say simplifying the shipping paperwork, um, it's really uh, touching your commercial invoice if you're an international shipper, uh, being able to process those uh, commercial invoices uh, seamlessly. Uh, we can either print those. We can also tie in electronically um, using like FedEx electronic trade documents, UPS paperless invoicing. Um, also bill lading for your LTL, being able to process that, as well as any hazardous documentation as well. Um, so if you are a hazmat shipper, the ability to print your OP900 forms, uh, the manifest that you're required, all of that can be done simply in Starship and not using uh, outside um, providers or maybe someone doing it manually in-house. <clears throat> So um, I put this slide in a presentation here, really to things to know when you're migrating to you know, Starship Cloud. Um, these are kind of common things that we get um, day to day from customers. Um, so really the main one here, all carrier platforms. So your world ship, ship manager, any uh, post office platform you might be using today, all of those go away. Uh, it's replaced by Starship. Starship's gonna be the sole platform that you would log into, uh, be able to print all your documentation, um, labels, packing lists, et cetera. Uh, and be able to get that tracking information and freight costs back into QuickBooks. The enterprise server for QuickBooks um, either has to be hosted locally uh, in-house um, or has to be hosted in a private hosted environment. Um, so we do get quite a few customers that call us and say that they're being hosted by QuickBooks, which essentially means they're being hosted by a company called Right Networks, 
Um, right Networks is not supported um, for Starship, and it's really not supported for Ship Gear either. Um, so I probably highly doubt you're using Right Networks today. Um, but Right Networks is a very low cost solution uh, that's more of a shared environment with Starship or requires a private dedicated environment. So again, some of those solutions that we do work with in the space, Fishbowl hosted solutions, go to my ERP, New Bay, are just a few of a long range of partners that you can tie in with if you are looking for any hosting um, opportunities for your QuickBooks environment. The QuickBooks Enterprise desktop um, is only able to connect to Starship Cloud via an online connector. Um, so all we need to uh, worry about when we implement Starship Cloud here is really loading an online connector onto each workstation that needs to communicate with QuickBooks, as well as for any printing uh, matter that goes as well. Um, so again, that's the only component that we need to worry about. There's no server component. There's no uh, hardware itself. You have your printers already, your scales potentially. So all of that remains intact. Um, and we just need to worry about loading an online connector onto each workstation. Um, the ability to log in anywhere in the world with Starship Cloud. There's no more VPN, remote desktop needed any longer. Um, it's simply a dedicated URL to your company uh, that you're essentially setting up. Uh, and if you're traveling, you're working from home, you're working in the office, anybody in the company can access the data that you are shipping on a given day. Um, so that's the beauty of the cloud environment. And then again, the ability to rate shop and ship parcel and LTL shipments in one platform is the main uh, attraction here. Um, so again, for those of you who may be shipping some at LTL, we will talk to you about that and your volumes. Again, if you're kind of a heavy focused LTL shipper, probably great fit for you. Low volume, you know, one or two a month, probably not going to be warranted, um, you know, right now. Uh, but again, we can always speak to you about that as well. And then I want to talk a little bit why we want, why do we want to convert to cloud, right? Why cloud? And we'll probably all be hearing about digital transformation many, many years, you know, in the making here. Uh, but really, the main thing is reducing IT expenses. Um, the sh to ship your server is removed. There's no Starship server as we host that in our, our Microsoft Azure environment today. Um, the, uh, no more updates. So all of you who have to worry about the world ship updating or ship manager updating every year and then updating ship gear to the latest version, that all goes away. Um, so those IT expenses are all removed. Um, Starship itself is always on the latest version. Um, it's running behind the scenes, the updates um, on a quarterly basis. Um, so when you come into work and log in, you don't realize anything has even happened. Um, it happens overnight um, and essentially you log in and just keep using the software as is. Um, accessibility to unlimited users and all carrier interfaces. This is a huge one, um, especially when we talk about companies who have multiple users um, or even having all the carriers to be applied. When we talk about LTL, LTL becomes very transactional. Um, so we know customers are switching carriers quite often. Um, so again, just being able to check a box and configure a carrier on the fly um, is very appealing to a lot of users. So again, we give you access to all of those um, that are, are in our portfolio. And then again, managing seasonality. We do work with a lot of peak shippers, uh, maybe heavy in the holiday season, in the summer seasons, um, being able to control your own pricing on the fly in your own portal. Uh, so think of Starship as any online subscription that you would subscribe for. Um, same concept. You can go and change your plan to a higher tier. You can bring it back down when it comes to off-peak season. So you're always in control of what you pay um, versus having a flat rate across the whole year. Um, again, very um, you know, beneficial for those uh, seasonality shippers. And then really restricting access to users on certain functions. Um, so again, having an administrator manage the um, uh, platform, you could have multiple administrators, but being able to give access to users for certain um, uh, functions uh, so things like uh, shipment processing or just rate quoting, maybe report generation or dashboard access. So all of those can be uh, provided to certain users. So that way you don't have users uh, potentially shipping a label out when they shouldn't have access to doing that and costing you more money. Um, so again, having that um, accessibility is really uh, powerful for those administrators. This is a quick slide on the various carriers we support here. Um, so you can see all the various LTL carriers, the parcel carriers we support. There's some Canadian carriers in here as well um, that we support up in Canada. Um, but again, if you realize there's an LTL provider that you work with that's not on the list, we don't say that we can't work with you, obviously. Um, we do have another module that we can generate a bill rating for any carrier in that uh, regard. We just can't provide those rates, unfortunately, since we don't have an API connection, but we can at least help you with pro number of bill rating to be generated if possible. 
And then lastly, here we do have our e-commerce platforms we support. So all your major providers out there, your Shopify's, WooCommerce, Magento's, BigCommerce, Amazon's, all of those are supported here. So again, we can either tie in directly or use them as an, as an extension of QuickBooks and be able to support both methods here as well. So again, if you're using any one of these, um, please let us know. We're happy to speak to you about that workflow uh, in more detail. And lastly, here, before I jump into a quick demo for you all, um, so I do want to share with you, you may have heard um, through the rumor mill, uh, but tomorrow you will have probably a, an effective notice that goes out um, to all Shipgear users. Um, but you will see, um, so right now, the current pricing that you're all paying for Shipgear is on the left. Um, and I do want to uh, let you all know the Shipgear pricing is increasing on 10.1. Um, so again, you'll see that what that looks like on the right side. I don't want you to confuse you this with the Starship pricing. Starship pricing is not reflected here. Uh, this is just to uh, really give you a heads up notice before the official notice goes out tomorrow um, that the ship year pricing is increasing um, on 10 1. So you will see whatever plan you're on today, what that corresponds to on 10 1. So hopefully you'll see with the advantage, with the discounts that we're offering to you, being ship year users, um, that it may be more beneficial to take that switch over sooner than rather than later. Um, come uh, before 10 1. All right, so let's just jump into the demo here quickly um, so you can all see what Starship does um, and how it all works with QuickBooks Enterprise. <clears throat> so, as I said here, um, you basically will have a dedicated URL to your company um, that you will all log into uh, initially every morning uh, to start processing your shipments. Um, one of the things um, to note is that this is your homepage here. So as you save orders in QuickBooks, you will see all of your orders start to populate in this home field, this home screen. Um, so you can easily start processing shipment by shipment. You can batch process shipments here. Whatever you like to do is an option for you as a user. Um, because you're ship your users, um, we do have this little dialog box up here that has you the ability to give you the, um, to scan in the order. You can type in your order just like you can in ship here today. Um, so that's this field up here where my cursor is right now. Uh, I can type it in, scan, hit enter, populate the order within Starship automatically. Uh, since I don't have a scanner here, I'm just going to go ahead and click the little icon over here to the right, and this will do the same function as well. And I should also mention you have the ability of adding multiple filters across the top, so you can filter on specific orders, what you want to view as a shipper, so it's not overwhelming from a laundry list of orders you may have coming in. So again, I'll go ahead and process the shipment here, um, so you can all see what that looks like coming in Starship. So again, as it comes in, um, the first thing that's gonna pop up if you have it enabled is our address verification. Um, because I have the recipient address, this address came back and you'll see a little red X over here where my mouse is. Um, it's saying that, hey, this is potentially an invalid address verified by the post office. So we're uh, basically providing you as a shipper some options by the post office, which has been validated um, that are close to that address you brought in. Um, you do at the very bottom of the screen have the ability of using original if you prefer. Or if you rather just pick one of these, you can use as selected as well, just to make sure that you're not going to potentially have any address corrections come in. And what you're going to see happen is a green checkbox apply here now. The address has been verified. We also do a secondary validation for you, checking for a business versus a residential. So you'll see in this case that we marked it as a residential shipment. Um, now we know that there's a residential surcharge potentially applied here with UPS. So when we bring the freight costs back in, those charges will be accurate. Um, so you can invoice that to your customer and not be billed after the fact um, with UPS. This section here in the middle is just your sender. So this will be defaulted to you as a shipper. Um, if you are drop shipping, we can change various addresses here. So we do talk to a lot of drop shippers. So if you want the send ship from address to be changed, we can have a mapping done back to QuickBooks, which we can talk to you more about uh, as we speak to you individually. Uh, but again, if that happens in your environment, please let us know. We're happy to speak to you about the drop shipping uh, method there. The transportation is being um, translated in out of the ship via from QuickBooks. So this defaulted to my UPS ground account here, to my uh, account number, um, billing, billing prepaid. Again, I like to mention in here, if you are um, uh, third party shipping on FedEx or UPS's accounts, or even for LTL for that means, um, we do have the ability of setting up third party IDs versus you having to type in the account numbers manually. But this is the screen here where you can simply add all your third-party accounts very easily with basic, basic information uh, and enter their account information on the front end. So anytime that we see that customer, it will automatically default to their account number. 
versus you having to uh, type that information in. Okay. So again, so that's the um, ship uh, transportation area. The shipment detail section is just really basically some options here. Just to highlight real quickly, your insurance is in here, CODs, um, Quantum View and FedEx Insight are also built into Starship. So if you're using Quantum View today, we do have that capability of sending out email notifications for exceptions um, only um, because we do have an opportunity of building custom email templates out of Starship to alert them of their ship and delivery notifications as well. But again, you can add any of these enabled. You can have conditions also set if you want us to mark insurance, for instance, on every shipment based on a value coming in from uh, QuickBooks. So again, we could talk to you about this in more detail, uh, but I just want to make mention of that, that these can be manually selected or auto selected based on your preferences. Um, and then down here, another difference between ship gear is ship gear is only bringing in basically ship via uh, information and address information. Starship's going to give you the ability to see all your items now coming out of QuickBooks. Um, so we're going to have all your items coming in. Um, we're going to default them to one box. Um, we do have packaging uh, scenarios we can talk to you about where we can have items defined to particular boxes um, for your users to basically use. Uh, but you can add boxes on the fly here very easily. As long as you have a weight in the weight field, you can go ahead and ship it. There's no need to move items around if you don't need to. Um, however, if you do need to create a packing list for any reason for a box, then you're going to want to move items around very easy by dragging and dropping. Um, now you'll see you have two items in two different boxes. Um, you also have a packaging database, just like you would in World Ship or Ship Manager, where again, we can store this on the front end. So we just easily pick what box we want to use. That associates to various dimensions off to the right here. Okay, um, you do have a build weight versus an actual weight field. The build weight is essentially just showing you um, your um, dimensional weight, uh, if you want to call it that. Uh, the dimensional weight itself um, is just basically calculating your dimensions with your dim divider. Okay, um, so you have that there. <clears throat> then you have basically your um, rates down here. Um, I'll talk about line items later on. Line items are really just QuickBooks mappings that we do. Um, in here, we also store your information like your weights or your values, also for international or hazmat. If you're a hazmat shipper, we can store your hazmat profiles in this section. So again, a lot can be stored here by item level. Uh, but again, we can talk more in detail as we speak, uh, you know, one-offs uh, with you about the line item section here. The charges here are just basically your ship via. Um, so this is just showing your UPS rates, so contracted rates versus applied rates. Um, so your uh, contracted rates are your negotiated rates here. I should mention we do show published rates as well. It's a checkbox you can turn on or off. So you could show published rates if you want. But applied rates are just essentially freight rules. Um, the freight rules are basically markups on top of your negotiated or published. Um, so you can see here I have about a 10% markup that I'm charging back to my customer. Um, so as long as this shipment cost from UPS in this case comes under $153, I'm in good shape. If I ever need to tweak the rule, I can always go into Starship and tweak that from 10% to 15% or whatever you like to add. You also have the option of adding handling fees if you want to do that as well. So just something to think about um, as you think about Starship. Then last but not least, you have your rate quotes um, down here. So your um, <clears throat> rate shop feature that I mentioned about earlier. Again, you can click the button here and click the um, shop all button. It will make the API calls out to each carrier that are on your license to show you those rates. You also have the ability of setting up rate shop rules, um, which will basically go out and um, uh, find the least expensive options for you and choose that carrier ahead of time so you don't need to click the button each time. Uh, but it's up to you how you want to handle that. <clears throat> but again, if I go ahead and click it, um, it'll take a couple seconds here to bring back all of your negotiated rates um, from essentially lowest to highest um, for your um, viewing pleasure, if you want to call that. <clears throat> so as it comes in, you also will see transit times coming in here as well. So all the transit times will be returned back. So here I have the ability of sorting on any one of these columns um, by clicking on any one of these. And right now you'll see a little arrow here that I'm basically sorting on my negotiated rates because I want to see which is the cheapest option for me to use. So in this case, because I brought in UPS, it's coming in second in line. My FedEx rates are actually least um, cheaper for me in this case, both five day transit times, but it's gonna save me about $18 in this example. Um, you'll also see post office right behind it. It's saying it's gonna get there in two days with priority mail versus five,
but it's going to cost me an extra, what is that, 20 some odd dollars um, to go that direction. So you have some decisions, what is more important, transit or cost. If you want to switch it, all you would need to do is switch it to FedEx Home Delivery by clicking the box, and it changes it to your FedEx account in that example. <clears throat> okay, and the nice thing I'll point out since I'm here, um, if you are shipping LTL and parcel, you will see that I have some LTL carrier options re returned back. So you do always have that option in Starship of seeing both loads um, if it's applicable. Um, so again, if you are in that cusp of saying 100, 150 pound shipment, maybe cheaper to go LTL, it will return your LTL rates in Starship so you can make that determination. I'll go ahead and ship and process, and then we'll take a look at the right back quickly, and then just a couple of value adds, and then I'll turn it over to some questions um, from everyone here. <clears throat> so as it ships and processes, um, again, we transmit this in real time to UPS in this case, your labels will generate, and then essentially the right back will all happen here for you as well. So I'm gonna show you the label real quick. Um, so again, we have multiple printing options. You can print your standard thermal printers, your laser printers, no problem whatsoever. This is a smart label that's up on the screen, which basically has your label and packing list together. It does require you to go out and purchase um, those labels if you wanna use this type of label in Starship. Uh, most customers do not do that. They use the free ones provided by the carrier, which is absolutely fine. Uh, but you can print the packing list to a uh, sheet of paper if you wanna do that as well, and just print your label to the thermal printer. Okay, so there's your first label. There's your second label. Um, those will both print. And now if I open up my QuickBooks order here, <clears throat> you're gonna see that I have the service, multiple tracking numbers based on that order. And then what ShipGear doesn't do, Starship can, is we can provide line item information, box dimensions, box weights if you want us to. But this is kind of neat. If you go back in, you can tell your customer what's shipped in what box essentially. We also rates, and then we also write back this word process in a custom field that I mentioned earlier, but this Starship ship status custom field is optional, uh, but this helps us eliminate that order from the Starship lookup window here. Um, if I go back to the uh, Starship screen, you'll now see my uh, ADA 29 order is gone. Um, so again, we're just setting that filter to look at that value in that field. If it's processed, it's gonna remove it so your shipper can move on and not duplicate their efforts in the future. Okay, <clears throat> let me just go over a couple of value adds here with the dashboard that you have access to as well. Um, so Starship provides you with a lot of information, probably more than you're going to want to have at your disposal. <clears throat> we provide you a full heat map. This is a distribution map of all your shipments across the country that you're shipping. The red spots are your hot spots. Lighter greens and grays are kind of where you're maybe just getting into, maybe fading. Obviously, it's a good way to you know look at expansion, good way to look at um, tapping the new markets. Uh, also very helpful to look at uh, negotiating new contracts with the carriers, right? Where are you shipping your product to? Do you have some decent discounts there? Um, so a good way to look at it. You have the option of drilling into any one of these charts and adding as many filters as you like to get a basic of overall view of what your shipping uh, looks like from a uh, range, carrier, whatever you like to do here. Um, over here, you have access to all of these various charts to look at as well. So like things like total shipments or total orders, you do have availability here. So again, same concept, you can drill in. I can change my date range I wanna look at. Maybe I wanna look at the past three months versus just the last month. And you're gonna see that it changes on the fly. So again, just high level visibility, just to show you exactly, hey, my trends are looking good. I have no questions, keep going, right? But if they're the other direction, you may question that as well. And then you also have access to all reports as well um, in here. So things like address correction, late deliveries, international detail, parcel, LTL reports. Um, this is a popular one where it's an applied versus contracted report, kind of showing you what you collected versus what was quoted, making sure that you're not losing any money in shipping. Um, so again, you have access to a lot of reports in here. Um, so again, you don't need to bother the carriers. You have it right at your um, fingertips to print at any point in time. And then also I mentioned the email notification, but you have the ability of customizing your email templates that you produce out of Starship as well. Um, so you can make these look and feel different for each customer. You can essentially make these look all the same for every customer. It doesn't really matter, uh, but just to give you sort of a overview of what one looks like here. Um, but again, as this comes up, <clears throat> if this will work here for me. Uh, patient. Um, but basically, we'll have basic any information you want to put 
logos, tracking numbers with hyperlinks, the contents of what was shipped, estimated delivery dates. So again, basically a, a overall picture for your customer. So again, they can go back to the UPS site or LTL site and track their own orders. I have put in Jason and Will, um, who are basically uh, my account executive and account manager um, that will be kind of working with me. I'm um, following up with all of you. Uh, but they do handle this space uh, with our QuickBooks users. Um, so please reach out to them. If you do have any additional questions, they can answer the questions as well. Um, and because, um, you know, we are kind of ship, you know, sunsetting our ship gear product um, and, you know, kind of explaining Starship Cloud here. And because of the loyalty you've all shown us, um, we are uh, providing you all with a 25% discount off the first year of subscription on Starship. Um, the onboarding service or the activation does need to occur before September 30th to take advantage of that discount. Um, so please, if you are interested, definitely worth to take advantage of that discount. I don't know what the discounts, if any, will be provided after September 30th at this point. Um, so again, if you do are interested, please take advantage of that because it is pretty substantial. Okay, thank you, Simon. Um, next question is how far back is QuickBooks compatible? Uh, we go back to version 13 um, of QuickBooks Enterprise. Okay, thank you. Um, next question is how is the shipping cost determined? So shipping costs um, kind of plays the same role as ship gear, right? It's based on volume. So how many parcel packages you're shipping per month, um, as well as how many LTL shipments you might be doing per month. Um, so those two factors. Uh, and then also uh, we didn't make mention of it, but locations, if you are shipping from multiple locations, um, has a very, very minor uh, cost factor to it, but it's primarily based on the volume that you're doing between parcel and them. Um, this is your, uh, I don't know if they could see my screen, but um, yep, this is your new pricing uh, for ship gear uh, coming up on October 1st. Um, so again, an email, formal email will be going out to everyone tomorrow. Um, so you'll have more information on this as well. Um, and again, thank you for the time this afternoon. We'll talk to you soon.